Good morning, ladies of Teshuva. I'm Rebecca Kahabachekova, and this morning I'm going to invite you into my new office space to uh, talk about the spring feast for a little bit. Um, I just want to say that it is pouring outside, and you can hear it on the roof. Um, I have some new audio stuff, but it isn't working. Um, I have been not feeling well all week long, otherwise I would have done a pre-workshop for the Spring Feast and then an uh, actual workshop for the Spring Feast, but uh, everything has been set against um, me doing this little video and against uh, actually just life in general. So we're pushing through that this morning. It's really early, no one's here yet, and uh, my lighting is, <laughs> as you can see, there's lots of shadows, but nevertheless, I'm just going to do this video because I think it is so important for ladies of Teshuvah to be walking in this rhythm that we have been talking about for the last uh, couple months. So I, I think that all I really want to do this morning is walk you through the rhythm of the Spring Feast. So we, we looked at uh, Rosh Hashanah, we found the head of the year, and, at, and from that point we have to count 14 days to find Pesach and then we continue on with the Spring Feast. So this morning, in case you're, I don't know, a little new to this, a little confused about how to find all the feasts and what they all are, and maybe even what they're about. I mean, what they're about is kind of huge. There's a lot there to that. That's why you celebrate them. That's why you study about them. It is so that you discover all the levels and the depths and the beauty of each one of these feasts and festivals of Yehovah. Right now, we have the spring feast on us, and it is like, Remember that river I was talking about and you're floating this river? Now you're going down some rapids because this is really going to hit you hard and fast if you follow all the feasts, if you want to keep all the spring feasts. They're like boom, 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 one right after another. So uh, it's a beautiful ride. It kind of comes on fast after Rosh Hashanah uh, as far as for me with all the preparation that I do for the spring feast. It comes quickly and then it's like boom the Passover and then unleavened bread and then first fruit the resurrection the first fruits and then such and such it goes really fast so it's like little waterfalls in this river that you are now floating so this morning I'm going to just I've been praying this morning I just uh, I feel really good um, we're dry <laughs> and I've been asking for the rock of the best to come and to fill me so that I can speak this few minutes to you so as you begin to prepare to live as a lady of teshuva, a lady of repentance, and move your family into celebrating the proper holy days, the holy days that are biblical, scriptural, from Yahweh, from Yahovah for Israel to celebrate. The rock is here. I can feel her. So let's just go real quickly into the spring feast because I want you to have an outline today of what's ahead. All right, just kind of an overview. It's not really a deep teaching, just an overview. All right. Okay, look at this really cool board. It moves. How fun is that? Ah, voila! The spring feasts. And I am going to show you what they are, in case you don't know. Many of you probably know all this, and if you do, forgive me. But uh, I'm just going to walk you through real uh, briefly where they fall. First... We start with Pesach. Well, remember, first we had to find the head of the year in order to count 14 days. The Torah tells us to uh, find Pesach, how to find Pesach, and we find it by counting 14 days from the head of the month and the month of Aviv. So from day one on month of Aviv, which is Rosh Hashanah, you start counting 14 days. You count Rosh Hashanah as one day, okay, just so you know. You count that day. 14 days later, it's Passover or Pesach. Yes. Pesach is the 14th day of the first month. Pesach, or Passover, is a work day. It's the day that all the priests were slaughtering all the lambs that day. Um, that day, the high priest, at the end of the day, he sacrificed his own lamb and put his own lamb in the oven at the very same time that Yeshua was being put in the ground. This is, this is incredible because how Yeshua fulfilled the spring feast. Remember, Yeshua, our Messiah, our Hamashiach, he fulfilled all the spring feasts. He has not fulfilled the fall feasts yet. So uh, when we look at all this, there are so many levels to this. You know, Passover, back in the Exodus, the first Passover, or the Passover, which we only, um, we actually only 
are doing remembrance of that. It's a rehearsal of Passover. There was only one Passover, and that was in, in Exodus. But the idea of how Yeshua fulfilled it was, is incredible because he passes over, uh, the judgment passes over us because of the blood of the Lamb, because of Yeshua's blood. Uh, the judgment, uh, the final judgment can pass over us if his blood is applied to the door of our hearts, just like back in Exodus where they took the blood of the lamb and applied it to the doorway of their homes and the judgment passed over. This is an incredible feast. It's a work day though. So what we do is uh, that day we all gather together and we set up Abraham's tent. We prepare the, the Seder, which we've been preparing for days before because it takes a long time to prepare for the for the uh, Seder, for the Passover, but you actually eat the Passover meal. You actually eat that in the evening of the 14th. So you're actually eating the meal as the 15th day is arriving. All right, so Passover is a work day. It's not a high Shabbat. And you eat the meal at, in the evening as the 15th day arrives. All right, so Pesach is about sacrifice. We know what happened to Yeshua on Pesach. Um, he was sacrificed on that day. He was the Pesach. And if you want to, to learn a little bit about was the last meal, his last supper, was the Lord's Supper, was that actually Passover? Was that the Pesach? No, it wasn't. And you can go to uh, uh, our website and in the article section, on the first page of the article section, there is, or somewhere in there, uh, there's a Prezi that I did, a Prezi presentation. It's kind of like PowerPoint on steroids. And it is a comprehensive look, completely comprehensive look at the scriptures and how Yeshua uh, was the actual Passover lamb. He was the Pesach. He had to die uh, as the Passover. He wasn't eating the Passover. All right, he wasn't eating the lamb. He was the lamb. It's really important to know this because um, it's throwing a whole bunch of people off. <laughs> so he was the Passover lamb. He was the Pesach. That's what he was grieving was being that meal on the table. All right, well, go to my Prezi and check it out. There's a comprehensive uh, study there for you if you're confused about that or want to understand um, what we see in the scriptures regarding that. Okay, so you have the 14th day of the first month is Passover, all right? As sun sets on Passover on the 14th day, that ushers in the 15th day of the month. Okay, so then on the 15th day of the month starts the Feast of Unleavened Bread or Hakhamatzot. And that, and this feast goes for seven days. Now this feast, Yehovah calls a hag, which a hag, if you look at the word in the Strong's, it means pilgrimage or pilgrim, or it's talking about doing a pilgrimage to Yerushalayim for this feast of unleavened bread. So you're supposed to come up to Yerushalayim uh, for seven days during unleavened bread. Now unleavened bread is when Yeshua was put into the ground. He was, uh, it was it's all about burial, right? It's about Yehovah, preparing the meal for us to eat of. All right, in, in unleavened bread, or during unleavened bread, it starts on the 15th day, it goes for seven days. Now the first and last day of unleavened bread are high Shabbats. Those are Shabbats, high Shabbats, or special Shabbats. So they could fall on any day of the week, given whatever year. This year, uh, unleavened bread is going to fall on a Thursday uh, because Passover is actually on a Wednesday. It actually follows the same, this year it follows the same schedule, uh, same rhythm that it did when Yeshua was here. So Yeshua was sacrificed on a Wednesday. He was in the ground on Thursday on, over that high Shabbat. Um, and then the very last day of Unleavened Bread is also a high Shabbat. So remember that when you're getting work off and stuff. Uh, Passover, uh, some people say, well, it's a work day so I can go ahead and work. Well. My, my feeling about that is he's not saying work for the pagans. He's saying work as in prepare for the feast. Okay, so whatever work we do on Passover should be in preparation for the feast of unleavened bread, not for normal work uh, that we do every day of the week for another kingdom, for another person to build somebody else's kingdom. You're building Papa's kingdom right here. Okay? All right. All right, so then, um, so it goes for seven days. Unleavened bread, or Hag Hamat, so it goes for seven days. The first and seventh days, a high Shabbat. All right, now we come to first fruits. This is a feast within this whole, um, this whole rhythm of the spring feast, and a lot of people kind of ignore this feast and don't know what to do with it. I think, um, but this is an incredible feast. This first fruits is amazing. 
First Fruits or Yam Habikarim is about so much. I mean, there's so much to this, this festival. Uh, and I'm going to do a teaching on it next week uh, for the community and the fellowship. But um, this is all about resurrection and about the first fruits harvest from the earth. So Yeshua was the first fruit. He also um, brought before Papa and waved first fruit offering before Papa, not only himself, but the people that had been marked on Pesach or when he died, the graves were marked, but the people didn't come out, remember? This is the same time that the priests would go out and mark the barley sheaves, and they would cut the barley sheaves at the beginning of First Fruits, which is actually at sunset on Shabbat, because First Fruits is always on a Sunday. And how do I know that? Because the scripture says that First Fruits is the day after the weekly Shabbat during Unleavened Bread. Okay, so First Fruits is the day after the weekly Shabbat during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay? So the priest would go out at the end of sunset or right at sunset on Shabbat and cut the um, sheaves that they had uh, marked here at Pesach. Same thing happened when Yeshua came. Graves were marked right here at Pesach. They didn't come out. The people didn't rise until he did. He rose at the end of Shabbat as first fruits was coming. You know, at sunset is the next day. So first fruits arriving, he raises out of the dead right before the end of Shabbat, and so do the other people. And we find who the, we find out who those other people are in Revelation, where it says that those were the first fruits. 144,000 were the first fruits. So 12,000 from each tribe, he raised and he took to Papa and he waved them before Yehovah. Now, if you, I know that's going to throw a lot of people into a little bit of chaos right there because a lot of people believe that 144,000 is yet to come. But no, in Revelation, it clearly says these are the first fruits from earth. And Yeshua took those first fruits and waved them and himself before Yehovah as a promise of a final harvest in the fall. Beautiful. I mean, first, and I love what Michael Rood was, uh, he sent, he talked about first fruits this week. Uh, I got a, a letter in the mail, which many of you probably did, talking about our first the idea of thinking about our first. The reason why we needed barley to be a aviv on Rosh Hashanah was so that 15 days later or so, they could, uh, so the barley crop would be ripe so they could offer it to Papa on first fruits and then start eating of it. So they couldn't eat of the barley until they'd offered it to Papa on first fruits. So, hence the idea of first. What is your first? You know, what, what do you do when you first wake up in the morning? What have you done with your first? Uh, you know, do you give tithe out of the abundance, your first? What are you doing with the first fruits offering? We have to bring an offering on this day. You know, even at this point, we don't have a temple. Uh, there is no temple. Uh, we are the temple. We give our first fruits. At this point, uh, as the rock moves and stirs us to give to ministries who have blessed you, to, uh, you know, people around you, however he, the rock moves you, give your first fruits offering. Um, to Papa on this day. All right, so you understand here where we are? Passover, first 14th day of the first month. Unleavened bread fifth, starts the 15th day, goes for seven days. First and last day are high Shabbat. First fruits is the day after the weekly Shabbat during unleavened bread, which would be a Sunday, always a Sunday. And he resurrects the, right at the end of that Shabbat. And I love it. He right, the resurrection right at the end of the show. We have a big resurrection party. It's a we have a pie potluck. <laughs> so fun. All right. And then this is something that a lot of people don't actually um, even do. But I love the idea that you can find the ascension. So here you have death, burial, resurrection, and ascension right here. And he just he doesn't just ascend as in goes up. He ascends in authority. He ascends to the right hand of Yehovah, and he wants to share his authority with his priests. So I think this is an incredible day to remember. You can actually find it. You know, in Acts it says 40 days after first fruits. So he shows up to the guys, and he eats on first fruits. He, he ascends to heaven, and then he comes back, and on first fruits, he is proving to them that he is not a ghost, and he eats in front of them. He eats uh, boiled fish, honeycomb, and matzah which is what we eat on this day to celebrate uh, what he ate that day. Um, but then it says, 
ascension, 40 days later he ascended. And all authority is given to him on that day. I think that's a really, really wonderful day to remember because we're, he's our rabbi and we are his priests. Why wouldn't I? Okay, and then we come to the very last spring feast, feast which is Shavuot. Now Shavuot is also a hag, which is it's also a pilgrimage feast. So you have a pilgrimage feast right here at Unleavened Bread, and you have another pilgrimage feast here at Shavuot. You have a pilgrimage feast in the fall, Sukkot, but uh, Shavuot is so complicated and so deep and complex that um, it's its own thing. It actually, we have a huge thing we do for Shavuot to celebrate this feast, but uh, interesting that what you need to remember is how to find Shavuot. Now, finding Shavuot biblically, scripturally, will solve a lot of calendar problems because the instructions say in the Torah that from first fruits, you're, you're supposed to count 50 days to Shavuot. Now, this is called the counting of the Omar. So during that time, you count the Omar uh, in order to find Shavuot. Now, he gives... Papa gives two ways to nail this feast, which is so cool. It's like a check. He, he gave two ways, two witnesses on how to find this day. And most of the people that celebrate different calendars, they are not finding this festival with both those ways. They're finding it with one way or what or whatnot. So when uh, you find someone whose uh, Shavuot uh, floats into any day of the week, um, they're not counting it right. Um, according to the scriptures. So according to the scriptures, Shavuot is found two ways, two methods. One method is 50 days after first fruits. First fruits, you start counting 50 days. And the day, or and then also the second way, the other way that you have to mark it or check it by is that it's after, it's the day after the seventh Shabbat from first fruits. So we're talking about weekly Shabbats. There's seven Shabbats that are supposed to be between first fruits and Shavuot. That has got to be talking about a weekly Shabbat. It can't possibly be another kind of Shabbat. So from first fruits, which happens on a Sunday, that next Shabbat, you start counting Shabbats. So you count seven Shabbats, and the day after that seventh Shabbat is Shavuot. It always happens on a Sunday. All right? So this is also called Pentecost, just so you know. This is all about restoration, restoration of the heart, restoration of our relationship with Papa. The Ruach HaKodesh lives in us now so that we can keep his ways and his laws and we're moved into covenant with him. So Shavuot is an incredible festival, but make sure that you find it biblically. And biblically, it doesn't float. It is on always on a Sunday, all right? So there you have a real a short... Uh, intro if you don't know anything about this and if you do then you just got refreshed <laughs> but this is how you find the spring feast so you have Pesach, Chag Hamatzot or Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Yom Habikarim, The Ascension, and then Shavuot. And between First Fruits and Shavuot you have Counting of the Omar which is real fun for, for those seven Shabbats my family uh, in order to help my girls know where we are in the counting, every uh, Shabbat we make a layered cake. So the first uh, Shabbat is a one layer cake and we split it. <laughs> then, you know, a little cake. I'm talking a little one like this. And so one, it has one layer and then the second Shabbat it has two layers and the third Shabbat three layers. By the time we get to the seventh Shabbat, it's a huge cake and it's a lot to eat. <laughs> so that's how my kids know. Oh, what Shabbat are we on? Where, where are we in the counting? Because they remember how many layers they had on the cake last week. So that was, that's a really fun way to do that. So I just want to encourage you. Um, I didn't do a full workshop, obviously. Uh, this would take hours. Each one takes a long time. Um, one thing I need to just mention here on Pesach, though, if you're new to this, read the scriptures about the, about, read the Torah, read the instructions on all these uh, um, one of the instructions here about Passover is that he says that uh, no foreigner can take part in it. So there are actually some feasts throughout the year that are special for Israel. You have Passover is one of them. So no foreigner is supposed to eat of this. So nobody who's just, this should not be a demonstration. Okay, so, so don't do a demonstration on Passover for Pesach. This is special for Israel. If somebody wants to, the Torah makes it very clear how a person or an alien 
uh, gets to celebrate Passover. They have to be circumcised. Well, back then it was circumcised in the flesh. Now it's circumcised of heart, which means that you'd have the rock in you and you'd be moved to follow his ways. You're not going to be a covenant breaker and celebrate Passover, okay? Um, the other uh, special day for Israel would be Yom Kippur, and the other one would be Shemini Atzeret, and those are other, other uh, feasts to talk about later. But uh, just be careful when you're doing this. Now, I'm doing uh, a pa we're doing a Passover for Israel, for those that are in covenant next week, on this day, on the 14th day. But on the next day on Unleavened Bread, wide open to anybody that wants to come learn. Uh, first fruits, wide open. Resurrection, wide open for people to come learn. Ascension, same thing. Uh, and so we're going to teach about all of this. I will go through what Passover means, but we're not going to do it for, um, for people that are not actually uh, walking this out. So, uh, yeah, it's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful rhythm, a beautiful uh, water. To, it's a beautiful river to, uh, to ride. Um, one thing, um, I guess, on, on Love and Bread, let me just mention real quick, is that um, a lot of people can get a lot, really hung up on uh, getting yeast out of their house. Now, the scripture says to get yeast out of your house, of course. Um, but if you look at what Shaul says about yeast and um, about the kind of yeast that is really what Papa's after, is not about the the yeast in your freezer that you make bread with, okay? You're gonna eat unleavened bread this whole week. And of course, we do that uh, symbolically, but the idea is that you get yeasty things out of your out of your life. You get yeasty things, uh, yeasty people out of your life. You know, Yahweh cleansed, cleanses his assemblies during this time. Yeshua cleansed his assembly of the yeast before uh, before this meal, before Pesach, because he, uh, the night before, during his last meal with his disciples, which that last meal was very important. Don't, don't get me wrong, that was the new covenant meal. So a very important meal, but he cleansed his, he cleansed his assembly that night by getting rid of uh, Judas. So remember that the idea is to, of unleavened bread is to get Yeshua in us. This is the meal that Yahweh has prepared for us. So unleavened bread in the scriptures, in the command, it actually there's more commands to eat unleavened bread than to not eat unleavened bread, okay? So eight times in there, I believe, he says, eat unleavened bread this week, eat, eat, eat. You can't fast from bread this week and keep this feast, okay? You have to eat unleavened bread. Now, for all you gluten intolerant people, uh, I actually have made an incredible, really good unleavened bread uh, that is gluten-free. So don't feel left out if you're gluten intolerant, all right? We can totally do this. So ju just a few things uh, before I bow out. This is uh, my book, The Mastery of Matzah. Uh, this is a great one to have for this feast, for this festival during unleavened bread. Uh, it, ha it talks about why uh, matzah and how to eat of the uh, of Yeshua. And then it has three basic matzah recipes and lots of ways to eat of Yeshua. I will um, need to add my brand new gluten-free challah recipe to this because uh, it's not in here yet, but I'm gonna do a video on that and show you exactly how to make that. And then also I have a Spring Feast book, uh, kind of like a handbook. Uh, I'm getting it up on, I'm doing some edits to it right now, and I'm going to get that up online so that you can purchase this for your box that goes in your storage unit so that next year you can open it up and there will be everything in there that you need to know to celebrate these feasts. And then I also have, uh, it's really cool, I love this, I'm getting them printed in color right now, but this is Papa Yahweh's Cafe. So Yahweh created uh, he prepared a meal. He prepared Yeshua as our meal. And so how do we teach our children to eat of Yeshua? Big, big question, especially for ladies of Teshuva who are walking your families into repentance. How do you teach your children to eat of Yeshua during this, this feast? This is a very, very important part of this feast. It is the feast. So um, here's a me it's a menu that I have made and I've just started. I mean, you could have 30 of these. It's uh, four pages, desserts, drinks, and all kinds of things. It's got like a chaga tea insight for drinks. It's got the incredible love above all waffle. So he loved above all. 
you know, and so I, it, it's really a fun little menu that you can hand your kids and your family uh, every night during Unleavened Bread, and you can sit down with your matzah, because every time you break bread, you're supposed to think of Yeshua, remember how he said, so then you can break bread together, and you can say, hmm, what do I want to eat of Yeshua tonight? I think I want to eat of his uh, does my will vegetable stew. Okay, what does that look like? What does that mean? Well, here's the text. Oh, yes, I'm going to look those up and read them, and you're getting Yeshua into you. That's the point of this feast. I also have some uh, posters that uh, you can hang on your wall, put on your fridge, that help you remember what these modims are about, the traditions, uh, the news in them that Papa wanted to give Israel, uh, the, the, a lot of the foods that you eat and stuff. So remember, ladies of Teshuva, you are uh, going to impress his ways upon your kids and you're going to invite your family into proper worship, not pagan worship anymore, right? So in doing that, you're going to look at each one of these and you're going to go, how can I invite my family into these? in a way that is going to impress upon the hearts of my children and the hearts of my husband the beauty and the depth and the meaning of these so that they want to celebrate these again next year. All right, that is your job as a lady of Teshuvah. Now this is a fast-paced, fast-paced uh, river right here. And if you don't uh, prepare for it ahead of time, it'll take you by surprise. And if, if you're just starting to celebrate don't get overwhelmed. Um, just do a, li do a little bit, but mark each one. So mark each one, but just do a little bit. You know, it, every year it, it, will, it will expound. Every year you will add to your celebrations. Uh, every year it will get bigger and more glorious, uh, you know, but don't get overwhelmed with looking at what I do right now and think you have to do what I do right now if you've just started. There's no way. I mean, I, I didn't do this now. Back when we first started, this was very simple. Very, very simple. This is my, our first year. This was in our kitchen, on our kitchen table with some friends. I had two candles and I had, you know, just a few things. And that's what it was. It was literally maybe an hour and a half thing. Uh, but it was marking the moment. And then the next year got more because we learned more. And I wanted to incorporate more into this so that my kids would learn more. So, all right. You are going to have a fabulous spring feast season. Ask for the Rock Hakadosh to come and live in you, and to move you to keep His ways and to give you ideas on how to celebrate. And if you're in the area, just come to ours and let's build community. I'm sorry this isn't a full, in-depth uh, teaching, but uh, I need to go back to work and get my seder, my hagada done for the seder. So you guys have a wonderful feast season. I will. Try to touch base again. Um, it's just uh, the river is here and uh, we're bending into raft down it and it's pretty much the rapids are on you. So just raft away, girlfriends, and uh, Papa loves you very much. Shalom. Bye-bye. Hag uh, Sameach. Yay, Hag Sameach.